Welcome, everybody, once again to our WrestleMania recap. It's been quite the weekend here on the WWE Network. We just saw some amazing content over the course of two nights for WrestleMania 36. Joining me tonight, Sean Cumberland. How are you, my friend? It's great to be here. The Commodore bids you well. It's good to be back with you, Steve, the News Newport. Uh, we're here to talk about uh, the most unique WrestleMania, the, Wrestle the only WrestleMania too big for one night and too big to have an audience. It was fantastic, I think. For what they had to work with, this was a great time. We've got the results for everything from SmackDown and Monday Night Raw that we brought together uh, for that particular weekend, plus some really cool matches that we didn't think we'd ever get a chance to see from some returning superstars and even more. Where do you want to start, Commodore? Uh, I, I I don't know. First, just, just kind of want to give a rundown. I'm not here to uh, debate the ethics of whether it should have went on or not. All I will say is that from a selfish standpoint, I am really glad the show went on because it was sort of just the escape, just the distraction I needed. And uh, frankly, I, I got a lot of enjoyment watching it because I was uh, watching it on uh, video calls uh, with wonderful people like you. And we kind of were still able to share our passion it's, for wrestling. It business. brought people together. And I think that's what the WWE really wanted to do this past weekend. So you can criticize them for putting on the event, but they are they were not only incredibly safe, uh, they did it in a way that was unprecedented and if you're in the mood to be sports entertained or just entertained for that matter 100 percent of the audience had to go to wwe right now every sporting event in the world has been canceled and they still found a way to put on a quality product in a way that was different than we'd ever seen before this is one uh that we've uh, all been talking about this week in 30 years when there is a history of wrestlemania book put out this one has an extra chapter this is the year where things were different on earth and uh, what do you have to say about that, Commodore? We're all in isolation here. Uh, normally, we do this interview next to each other. Yeah, yeah normally, I'd be sitting next to you. We'd be, we'd be sort of making quips at each other back and forth. I might hit you with this belt. Right now, I cannot hit you with this belt, which it's is technically true. That's the fine. And I've got uh, one right here. Uh, I got one with me as well. Uh, this one belonging to Drew McIntyre now. So very, very exciting stuff right there with the WWE Championship. So yeah, all, all I will say is I, I had a great time and. uh I, I think I fall more into the, I enjoy the Vince McMahon brand of sports entertainment. And if you kind of go into it, uh, not taking it too seriously and just, just kind of going with the fun that we were trying to have. The, the best three matches on the card were the ones that sort of took advantage of the fact that it was not a traditional show. And uh, those three I enjoyed tremendously. But we'll, we'll get to those as we, as we go along. I absolutely agree with you, though, just to jump right out of the gate. This is one of those times we're just going to have to agree to agree which is not normal for us. And I hate that. I hate agreeing with you more than anything else. But it is what it has to be because that's just what it was. And we'll talk about them each as they go. But where do we start with WrestleMania? Two nights ago, we got things kicked off right at the beginning. Tell us about it, Commodore. All right. Well, I, 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 I'm not going to go over the kickoff show because, frankly, I was busy getting, uh, getting pizza delivered to me while that was going on. <laughs> but the first match on the first part of the show on day one, we had the women's tag team titles. Up for grabs, the uh, defending champions, the Kabuki Warriors, taking on my future wife, Alexa Bliss, and Nikki Cross. Bliss and Cross, the wonderful combination of people. Bliss so Cross, Applesauce, I believe, is their official tag team name. Really? Awesome. That sounds And if it's on a t-shirt, that makes it official, I assume. It makes it official if it's on a t-shirt, so that works for me. I'm not, I'm not mad at it. What is it? What does it say it again? Bliss Cross, Applesauce. Bliss Cross, Applesauce. It's stupid. I love it. <laughs> it's, an, it's intentionally stupid. I think I think it's I saw I think Alexa Bliss tweeted that out a while back, and uh, and as far as I'm concerned, that makes it the official name of the team. That makes it. Uh, right. And it was it was a great way to get it started. I think uh, four very uh, talented ladies uh, getting us kicked off there. Um, I I, I got to tell you, no no one in the world loves Alexa Bliss as much as I do, and that includes that guy from Bowling for Soup who did that song. It's a uh, good great song, song. Oh, Alexa Bliss. Check it out, guys, on your Google Home or your Alexa app. Uh, yeah, ha Alexa. Having said that, I, I, I'm, I'm still finding it a little weird seeing Alexa Bliss as a baby face just because I see her as that, that very strong heel character. That's when she's uh, at her best, but uh, she's been still doing great work. I'm really enjoying uh, seeing Nikki Cross coming, come into her own. She did some commentary uh, a couple weeks ago on SmackDown with Michael Cole. Just drove Michael Cole uh, absolutely uh, nuts. But uh, I, I frankly think she's delightful. Uh, Asuka, uh, as we know, very talented in the ring and also been doing some entertaining stuff uh, with the commentators uh, during this sort of weird time where we need to find if, different ways to entertain us. 
Yeah, it's a chance for some of the wrestlers to do things that aren't uh, typical. Uh, obviously, not having a full team down there on the microphone allows them to have more of a revolving door as some of the superstars coming in. I found that kind of nice. And having fun like that is something lighthearted. The world needs lighthearted entertainment right now. WWE is about kicking each other's asses. But in this case, it brings the fun. What do you think of the results of the match? Uh, well, I, I was very uh, happy to see uh, uh, Alexa and Mickey uh, take the titles. Uh, I, I'm wondering where this is going to go. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to what I feel is an inevitable implosion of this team, but I think it's going to be very entertaining along the way. I think eventually we're going to see Alexa get back to her normal ways, but I think Mickey might, might become smart enough to actually see it coming and make the first move. But uh, I'm very That's happy with, them with those tag team titles, what they can do with them both in the ring and uh, some great moments on a moment of bliss, no doubt, coming our way on Friday Night SmackDown. Very cool. And uh, from Friday Night SmackDown comes also Monday Night Raw. Who's next on our list? I hate to move along, but we got a lot of matches to cover on this thing. We love Alexa Bliss, so shout out to you and Chris uh, Bliss Cross Applesauce, the new tag <laughs> team who took the title. I don't know, Commodore, they've got titles, we've got titles. We, we've got titles. They we have a lot in common. You know, I, and I think think someday when the time's right, that's going to come through. Our next match, uh, uh, Elias, who, again, one of the most entertaining oh, people. Uh, a lot of fun out. with that guitar. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, we, saw, we saw Elias defeat uh, King Corbin, and I, I don't think anyone's mad at that result. I think we're all happy uh, when we can see King Corbin uh, get it his come up. And Corbin loses, it's a good time, I think. Uh, but those two, they put in a good match. It was a fun match, but I think it was kind of that time of the night where people are like, all right, WrestleMania is getting started. We had a fun match with Alexa Bliss. Now I'm going to go to the bathroom and get ready for the third match. Is what right. I, anytime Corbin comes out, that's well, kind of my chance. Right to get the right. third match, though, very, very high stakes. The Raw yeah. women's title on the line is Becky Lynch defended against Shayna Baszler, Shayna uh, Baszler. coming from NXT. Yeah. NXT's own Shayna Baszler. Now, the results of that one surprised me, Commodore. It, it, it surprised me as well. I, I got to tell you, they... they they put on a, a, a great match, but I, I really thought and, and, and frankly think Shayna Baszler should have won the match. This might have been her time, but That's I don't want to... I agree with you. I agree with you. But I don't want to jump ahead to the absolute finale of WrestleMania. But maybe Shayna's time deserves an audience, maybe a crowd. Um, we're going to get to the last match of the last night by the time this is over with, so I don't want to jump ahead to it too much. But the crowd pop really makes or breaks certain aspects of the WWE. And I think that Shayna Baszler's time will come. And I'm certainly hopeful that it's in front of a live studio audience. They deserve right, that. that. Hold excellent out. point. And I'm, I'm a big Becky Lynch fan. I've, I've loved uh, seeing her progression over the last two years. But I think the most interesting thing to happen for her would be to lose the title and have to be in the hunt again. I think that's uh, what her character needs right now. One thing, I, I got to agree with you right there. I've met Becky Lynch a couple of times. Wonderful, wonderful woman. Very and I'm a big fan. Just because I think she should have lost does not mean I'm not a huge oh, fan. Oh, I know. Of her oh, oh, that's what I was going to get at right there. Right there. I, she's probably one of, uh, if not my all-time favorite women's wrestler, um, at least in the current roster. Uh, I, just her as a person and her as a wrestler. I think, like you just said, the one thing she needs to be the best Becky Lynch she can be is a drive, a reason, a passion to fight again. And she doesn't have that when she's on the top dog. Once you get that belt, you're at the top. She needs to fight to get to the top because that's when we see the most potential out of Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch is uh, so often compared to Stone Cold Steve Austin. And mm -hmm. when you think about Stone Cold Steve Austin's run, the most compelling stuff, he would hold the title but it would always be taken away from him, and he'd have to fight back for it. And I think if we're, if we're looking at, at Becky Lynch's new Steve Austin, which, which I, yeah. I think is a, it's a, it's a fairly good company to be in. It's uh, not I, I often times if, I Oftentimes, if I'm sitting around thinking about Becky Lynch, just like kind of just daydreaming about Becky Lynch, Stone Cold's image pops into my head. You're right. You're absolutely right. It happens <laughs> to me all the time. I hope it happens to you, too. <laughs> it will from now on. It will from now on. Thank you, thank you for that news. I appreciate it. That's, let's that's, let's that's, move it along, guys. Becky Lynch, one person. Oh, well, right, was a raw match. Next up, SmackDown, right? Something from SmackDown happened. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I did not write down which uh, which one was from which because the next match was from SmackDown. Uh, Sami Zayn retaining, uh, I want to say, the inter the Intercontinental title against it Daniel Bryan. I missed the old belt that they had, the white belt they had, but that's not the important part here. The important thing is that Sami Zayn retains... 
What are your thoughts on that? Sami Zayn's pretty cool. It's good to see him back out there in the wrestling world. He was a mouthpiece for a while. So having him up there fighting was fun. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt that the two men in that match are uh, two of the most talented on the roster, can uh, can always uh, be counted on to uh, be those workhorses who have great matches. And I, uh, I, I, I think they did. Uh, as far as the story goes, obviously, uh, Sammy, he cheated to get the belt. He cheated to keep the belt. That's our thing. Uh, we have That's, Daniel Bryan yeah. supposed to be, uh, out here uh, helping him. It was it was okay, but when I, I think when you look back at classic Daniel Bryan matches, this may not be the one that comes to mind, but both those guys well-deserving of a spot on the card and a well, well-deserved to be in that Intercontinental title run. A, a prestigious belt, uh, well, both the Intercontinental and U.S. title, are you know have, have that history to them and uh, certainly an honor to carry. It's, it's not... Quite as great as being on top, but it's, it's the workhorses, the great workers who often hold those titles, and certainly having those two compete for it was apropos, I think. Definitely a good point, Commodore. Congratulations to Sami Zayn on that one. Very good. Who's next? I like how uh, we're rolling through them. We had, had John Morrison, who's one of the members of the Tag Team Champions, uh, go against uh, a, a member of the Usos and a member of the New Day. And i, I got to be honest with you, I'm, I, I, I know he had Kofi in there for the New Jimmy Day. Usos, I think it was in- yeah. Maybe it was Jey Uso, yeah. <laughs> I think it was Jimmy Uso. I'm, I'm pretty sure, but, but it's so weird that you you defend the tag team uh, titles in a non-tag team match. That's uh, yeah. sort of a very, yeah. very unique thing. situation. Very unique set of circumstances, I know. Uh, the Miz having to be with his family during this uh, COVID-19 crisis, I understand it, but it's a yeah, weird I'm, thing. Like, like everything else, you got to kind of put everything in the context of the world we're living in, but... Um, it, it, was, it was just so weird, uh, like, to do a tag team match that way. It, it, stakes were there, though. Unique stakes. Weird stakes. But at least now we know definitively that the tag team champions are... Who won that match again? Uh, it, it, they remain the Miz and John Morris. <laughs> the Miz and Morrison com, uh, connect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But uh, the Miz and Morrison Monopoly, that's what their tag team's called now. But um, it's not bad. Make it so. Yeah, that's it. That's what, as Picard would say, make it so. But that, they were a good team. Yeah, but good for them. So moving on, though, we're just keeping the card going because we want to get to the exciting one, which is... Yeah, we're, 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 we 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 got to get to uh, the the end of the show. But uh, we uh, next had uh, Kevin Owens uh, defeating uh, Seth Rollins, which uh, they, they put on a great match. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're two of the best in the WWE. And I, I, I think they put on a... You know, they did what they could uh, without the crowd. There were some good stunts uh, in that match. It was interesting that the match... They ended and they got restarted. Uh, first, Owens had won by disqualification because uh, uh, Seth Rollins got himself disqualified, but then the match continued and uh, Kevin Owens continued to prevail. I thought that was fantastic. It was a neat way to do it. It was something to change up the progress of the show because we don't always get that. We um, and It's I think, great to see uh, Kevin Owens pick yeah. up a victory in this uh, high-profile situation, and I, I, don't, I don't think losing is going to hurt Seth Rollins either. Can't, uh, can't agree more. They're going to both that. move on. They'll both move on with some good stuff. Very good, though. But congrats to Kevin Owens for winning twice. <laughs> that's true. How many people have won two matches at one WrestleMania? Uh, so, someone could tell me that that's probably happened before. Uh, Owen Hart. No, no, no Owen Hart didn't do it. But um, anyway, let's move on. The next match is for the Universal Championship. I haven't heard from him in a while. Yeah. Universal <laughs> Championship. Uh, substituting for a, for an absent Roman Reigns, uh, Roman Reigns, I call it. champion Bill Goldberg. Billy G. It is 2020, and I did say Universal Champion uh, Bill Goldberg. Um, that was that was something else right there. I think, and it was interesting to see Goldberg back yet again. But I feel like Goldberg's one of those superstars that, like, when he had his run a couple of years ago, it was a really nice finale piece. But now him coming back again and again and again with the Saudi Arabia piece and with this. It's almost uh, enough is enough with Bill Goldberg, unfortunately. And this, to me, was an unceremonious end to his career yet again. Uh, unfortunately, I have to agree with you. Before you before you launched into that, I was going to launch into something very similar. I really enjoyed what Goldberg and Lesnar did uh, a couple years ago, WrestleMania in Orlando. I think that was uh, WrestleMania 33. It was like three years ago now. And I think that was, a, that was a great way to end the career. But I have not been a fan of how they've used Goldberg uh, over the last year or so, uh, you know, ob- obviously the the match with the Undertaker in Saudi Arabia pretty well considered to be a fiasco. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they fed him Dolph Ziggler afterwards, which I I, I don't think helped anybody, and uh, I, I I don't think any fan. Well, there might be some fans, but I think very few fans really enjoyed 
seeing Bill Goldberg dethrone the Fiend as the champion of Saudi Arabia just a couple of months ago. Uh, so the match was what it had to be. I, I, I like Braun Strowman. I'm happy to see him uh, get the title, and I'm happy the title will go to someone who will consistently be on the show and will probably mm-hmm. have sediments. Uh, sediments. That's uh, that's not correct. So that, that's what's in the soil. Apparently, that joke was a little rocky. <laughs> Well, it wasn't Adam or Aisha. Now I've gone off the rails on the, that joke. <laughs> but uh, great, great. but let's talk about at the rate, uh, I'm happy for Braun Strowman to win, but I uh, I, I, I wish uh, the, the, the match was what it was, which wasn't much, yeah. right? But let's, let's, wrap, tonight, let's ratch up, wrap up night one. We're going to do this in two parts because I just was told yeah. I have to get off the air. But we've got two parts. Let's wrap up part one with... One of the most unique things the WWE has ever done, in my opinion. One of the best matches on the entire card for both nights. We had a the first ever Boneyard match mm-hmm. uh, where The Undertaker took on AJ Styles. And uh, this, this was a very cinematically uh, done experience, which is honestly the perfect thing to do for WrestleMania right now, since you can't really have those great matches in the arena. So, so this, this was shot like a Hollywood film uh, in a great way. We start right off with the entrances. We had what we assumed to be the Undertaker's entrance with his music uh, and a coffin coming out. Inside was AJ Styles. It was a great fake out. And then we have Undertaker arrive on a motorcycle. Shades of the American Badass character. Amazing stuff. I love the American Badass scenes coming out like and, that. And, uh, essentially, I think this, this is fairly close to the real Mark Calloway. Kind of, I think, who you see uh, in the American Badass is a lot closer to who he is, as, as best I can tell, and as best I've, I've heard and read over the years. Uh, so it's cool to see him arrive on the motorcycle and do that. And they, they did just just a, a lot of great stuff. It was, you know, a lot of stunts, uh, a, lot of, a lot of great character stuff, uh, you know, talking to the camera and everything. Uh, and it was really a tremendous amount of fun to watch. And it was the, definitely the best match of the first night and, and really left it uh, on a good note. And at this stage of The Undertaker's career, I think this is the absolute best way you can use The Undertaker uh, in, in a way that keeps his character and his mystique alive, but he doesn't have to carry a match in the ring in the traditional way. That's precisely what I was going to say. Had Undertaker had a conventional match, it probably wouldn't have been nearly as exciting. He wouldn't have been able to showcase his, well, American badassery. And it, it was just a matter of playing to the strengths of these characters. It was cinematic. It was something that lets you believe in the lore of The Undertaker again, something that you haven't necessarily seen since the Attitude Era because The Undertaker has always had this persona, but in the ring, we have to be honest with the fact that he's getting up there in years, and there's not always a chance to perform at your peak efficiency. He's uh, he's at least 15 years older than AJ Styles, for one. Uh, I mean, Styles was watching The Undertaker as a kid, in the WWF. So we're talking a huge... He made, he, to put it in perspective, it is 2020. Undertaker made his WWF debut yeah. at the end of 1990. So we're yes. talking, uh, yeah, 40 years? That, I'm bad, no, 30 years. Sorry, I'm really bad at that. But, but the thing is, that's 30 years since he debuted years. with Vince McMahon. Yeah, he wrestled for since that. he's been a wrestler. Yeah, exactly. So he's been in the game longer than most of us have been alive. And uh, it's fantastic stuff. But... The finale of that match, cinematic, yes. But even more than that, cemented the badass legacy of The Undertaker that I think we all remember and all love. He's been fake retired I don't know how many times at this point. But even if that was his last match, which I'm certain it won't be, because he's the kind of guy who will go out on his back. But even had that been his last match, that would be one to remember for a really, really long time. That, that, that is not a bad way at all to go out. And the, the shock on AJ Styles as, as The Undertaker was behind him. And uh, uh, AJ Styles was, was doing great playing the heel, but you could sort of see underneath it he was having a great time with it. And I think they were having a good time with it. So we as the audience had a good time with that. I'm a big believer in that type of thing. And I think that kind of came through in this match. Uh, not in a bad way at all. I completely agree with that, Commodore. Sean, the Commodore Cumberland, everybody. Any final thoughts on night one of WrestleMania? And, folks, we will be back for night two in just a little while. And here we're going to take a brief hiatus and separate this for you so that you basically so you don't have to see us talk this long. But it's, it's been a good time. Commodore, final thoughts on WrestleMania night one. Night one, again, uh, the, uh, the Boneyard match was definitely the highlight of it uh, for me, and I, I had a great time. But we'll have a lot of other great stuff to talk about uh, for night two. Exactly right, which we're going to do 
in just a short while, guys. Stay tuned for that. And also, uh, if you happen to have the USA Network, check out Monday Night Raw. They'll tell you more about this, but it'll probably be more professional than the two of us doing it. Uh, but we will see you back here later tonight with even more on WrestleMania night number two. Uh, for Sean the Commodore Cumberland, I'm Steve, the News Newport. We'll see you guys real soon.